Previously, we discussed the functionality of put function block that is used for writing data to a remote PLC. In order to read the data from a remote PLC to a local PLC, get function block is used. So here, today in this video, we will discuss the functionality of a get function block, which is used for reading the data from a remote PLC. Suppose we have two PLCs that are connected in a network. This is the PLC1. And over here we have the PLC2. Both the PLCs are connected through any communication medium, for example, an Ethernet communication medium. We call this PLC as local PLC, while this one as a remote PLC. For example, there is a data block named as DB10. And this data block contains some data that we want to read into this PLC, the local PLC. So we create a data block with the same name as DB10. We can also create it with another name, which is not necessary because this data block will be executed in the program of this PLC1. And in this PLC2, it has its own data block and its own program. So in order to read the data or in order to read the contents of DB10 from the remote PLC into this local PLC program, we will write a function get into the program of this PLC. So suppose we have the OB1 as the main program in this local PLC. So we will call this get function block inside the OB1 of the local PLC. And let me explain the interfaces of this get function block. Over here we have the input interface enable. We can put any condition. Well, this is a clock signal that we give at this input interface. It is necessary for continuously reading the data from the remote PLC. Well, this is the ID. And here are the important interfaces of this get function block. Well, the data will be read from the data blocks at this input interface. So this DB10 is the data block of the remote PLC, remember. While this data block is the data block inside which we will read data contents. So the contents of this remote PLC DB10, which is at this input interface, will be read inside this DB10, which is the data block of the local PLC. In other words, the contents of this, this data block will be copied inside this data block. So this data block, which is at the RD1 input interface of the get function block, resides inside the local PLC program. This address, address 1, has DB10 block as an input interface, which resides in the program of this remote PLC. Hope it is clear enough now. We can also have multiple data blocks. So we can have address two, address three, address four, and we will have the RD1, RD2, RD3, RD4 correspondingly. For the sake of understanding, we, will, we have written only two interfaces, or we have connected data blocks at these uh, address one interface only. In other words, we are copying the data, we are reading the data from only one data block. So let me explain the functionality over here again. As you have, uh, as you can see that we have db10 dot db x 0, 0.0 real 16 
this is inside the remote PLC, which is the PLC2 in this case. And inside the local PLC, we have the data block with the same name. We can, we can change the name, but we have kept it same. It's up to you. DB x 0.0 real 16. So what this get function does inside the program of this PLC one, it copies the content from this data block to this data block. So the data block in the remote PLC DB10, DBX0.0, it start copying the data from the first bit of this DB10 all the way to the 16 real values. So one real value equals 32 bits. Well, the double integer or real, they are, they are of 32 bits. So we copy the data, real 16. So we have 16 real values. So it's a bit, uh, it's quite a big chunk of data. So 16 into 32, whatever is the result, we are copying all those bits from this remote PLC DB10 inside DB10 of the local PLC. So it's cop it start copying the data from the very first bit and it carries up to all those bits uh, that is in the DB10. So we, we are copying 16 real values actually from the DB10 of the remote PLC to the DB10 of the local PLC. So this is how we are reading the data. We are getting the data from the data blocks of remote PLC to the local PLC. Hope you understood the functionality of this function block. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and see you next time.